What's up guys, Vanya from Mega Movie Farms and today we're talking about rams on snails. Some people hate them, some love them, but most just don't know them or understand them and that's why I made this video. So basically you get two types of rams on snails. Mini rams on snails like you see on the tip of the leaf here and normal rams on like you see in the middle of the leaf. Regular rams on snails come in a variety of colors, orange, brown, red, blue and some even have spots and are known as leopard rams on snails. They prefer a pH of around 7.5 to 8, a KH of between 5 to 15, and they live for about 2 years. They generally don't get larger than 2 cm. They are hermaphroditic, which just means that two of them from the same sex can reproduce. They lay clutches of eggs of around 15 eggs per clutch, and it takes between 9 to 10 days for the eggs to hatch. So why do people hate these cute little guys? Well, if there is enough algae or uneaten food, they'll go crazy and reproduce very, very quickly. I'm talking about starting with less than 10 snails and ending up with more than 600 two months later. I mean, that's just crazy, but their numbers depends on a lot of factors, but more on that later. Another reason why people hate them is because of their eggs. They lay their eggs in clusters everywhere, on your filter, heaters, on your substrate, on your plants, and sometimes even on another snail's shell. The most irritating thing is when they're laid on the front panel of your glass and you see the blotches everywhere. Even though these egg patches are only around 1cm and are semi-transparent, they can still look very ugly. The last reason why people hate these snails is because they think the snails will eat their plants. True rams on snails won't eat plants. They do however know before we do that certain plants or parts of these plants might die. They start eating the parts that's dying and then we think they eat healthy plants when in fact they don't. This leaf will actually stay alive a lot longer due to them eating the dead parts and the main reason this leaf is dying is not because they are eating it but because it was grown immersed. Now that it is submerged and melting it looks like they are eating a perfectly healthy leaf but they are only eating the parts that are dying or melting. I keep rams on snails in almost all my tanks and I confirm that they don't eat healthy plants. But I have seen some of them eat perfectly healthy kabomba stems but only only that and nothing else. They also eat the algae off the plant which I think is awesome. So if they are so bad why do I keep them? Well I don't think they are bad, other people do. I mainly breed shrimp and they help me out a lot. Firstly they eat any uneaten food so I never have to stress about overfeeding. Second they eat all my dead plants so my tank will always look better. And third they clean my algae off the glass and landscape so it makes my job easier. And lastly their poop are very beneficial to shrimp. The shrimp eat the snail's poop and they get the vitamins or minerals that they would not have gotten any other way. I really like rams on snails and I like looking at them. I don't overfeed any of my tanks and I also don't have much algae. So the snails don't have a big enough food source for their numbers to get outrageous. In fact they are really struggling to stay alive in my tanks due to not having enough food available. But let's say you see the snails as a problem and you don't like them, what should you do? Well, get bottled treatments from your local pet store. There are a lot of products that you can use, but just make sure whatever you get does not kill your other livestock, as most bottle treatments that kill snails will also kill shrimp. And also be careful because if you have a lot of snails that die simultaneously, it might cause an ammonia spike. If you don't like adding toxins to your water and you want to reduce their numbers, just feed a 2cm piece of cucumber or zucchini at night and they will bunch up on it during the night and it will be very easy to remove the next morning. You can do this every second day until you are satisfied with your snail numbers. After you have removed them, you can set up a snail only tank or you can do what most people do and squish them or just smash them with a hammer. Another tip is to remove algae from the sides of your aquarium. Algae is their main source of food. Take that away and the newborn babies have a lesser chance of surviving. Just remember, if you have algae there's a reason. Whether it's lack of filter media, your lights might be on for too long or your lights are not the right spectrum. You need to sort this out before you can sort out your snail problem. Another way you can reduce rams on snails is by adding assassin snails. I do not recommend this though as I feel that feeding one animal to another is very cruel but a lot of people do this. And by using assassin snails they also breed relatively quickly so you might get an assassin snail problem but assassin snails are a lot easier to control than the rams on snails. And lastly you can also reduce their numbers by building a trap. Just take a 500ml water bottle Cut it just before the bottle starts to get narrow. You can add a stone to weigh it down. Now all you need is to invert it and add a small amount of food. You don't need to silicone it, otherwise it will just make it harder to reuse in future. It will fit in easily and stay in perfectly if you just use a bit of force. Just remove it the next morning and remember not to leave the trap sideways in your aquarium because then your fish might enter. 
Shrimp will however also go in no matter which way the bottle faces. Now you know everything about big rams on snails, but what about mini rams on snails? 95% of the snails you see here are full grown mini rams on snails and the rest are baby Malaysian trumpet snails or regular rams on snails. This is what happens when there's a big food source and in this case it's algae. The mini rams on snails are too small to take out easily, yet big enough to make your tank look very ugly. Mini rams on snails are about 1 to 3 millimeters big and they are the worst snail ever in my opinion. They don't cause much damage but they tend to look very ugly in large numbers and can get into your filter and cause your propeller to wear out quicker. I literally cringe when I see this tank filled with mini rams on snails but I left it to show you how they look in large numbers and when this video is done I can finally do something about this tank and get rid of them. Ok guys now for your 3 random facts. Fact number 1. Red rams on snails have red blood whether others have green or brown blood. A red rams on snail actually slipped out of my hand the one day and hit the top edge of the tank on the bottom of my rack. I immediately grabbed the snail and added him back to the tank with his cracked shell. I realized my hand had drops of blood on them and when I wiped my hand I could not tell where the blood was coming from. So I looked at the snail, he was bleeding into the water. I felt really bad but it was very interesting to see the red blood. The snail did survive and even grew back a piece of his shell that broke off. Fact number 2. Rams on snails have the ability to take air and put it in their shell to help them with buoyancy. They use this to float to the top of the tank or to help them glide on a surface almost effortlessly. If a threat comes they can move the air out so they can quickly drift to the bottom. And lastly fact number 3. Rams on snails like to float to the top of the tank and eat the gunk that floats on the top of the water. I stopped my surface dissipation for a couple of days in order to show you how this looked. They float upside down, so if you see this, it's perfectly normal and you should not remove them. But that's it for this video guys, if this video sucked, you know what to do, but if it was awesome, get subscribed, press that like button and check out our other videos. I really hope you guys learned something today, and as always, keep it shrimple.